You're having fun with your friends. You're rolling dice. You're playing make-believe. And it's really nice. Welcome back, everybody, to Side Quest Side <laughs> Sesh Thursday <laughs> Night Live. Live. <laughs> if this is your first time watching the show, don't turn it off. But you should be ashamed of yourself because for the past 26 weeks, 27 if you don't count the week I almost died, we have been putting on uh, a show and a half <laughs> that ended with, with quite a quite a climactic punch in the gonads last week. <laughs> All week long, the interweb has been abuzz, wondering what happened in those final moments. Not since Ned Stark. <laughs> People feared for the lives of fictional characters. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Let's. Oh, we're going to find out tonight what is going on. We're going to find out about the future of this show. That's why we started so late tonight. We were sitting here deciding, should we even do it? Should we even? <laughs> I think that, well, that was a great ending. What are we doing here? Why don't we just right. maybe talk for 10 minutes, sign off, go to the after party, and we're done with Side Quest Side Sesh. Let, let people wonder what happened. Maybe we'll do that. A Sopranos <laughs> ending? Should we license yeah. Don't Stop Believing to <laughs> just start playing? Don't stop. Blackout. <laughs> <laughs> they will do it. I don't know. Anything could happen. I never know what's going to come out of our mouths. Especially Matthew. He's got a real Jersey potty mouth. You meanie head. <laughs> How dare you, sir. <laughs> oh, what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? How are you guys doing? Grant rocking the uh, the tank top. You know, I don't like that look on a man. You know, it's uh, <laughs> I didn't tell you guys this before, but I'm actually uh, secretly my spare time is used on the Mavericks G League squad. And uh, the problem is with Goran Dragic going out for the heat in last night's game, uh, they need someone above six foot one to join their 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 roster and the heat need. Pro players now that they're going ac against an actual NBA team after beating the Celtics. Yeah, so, yeah, that was easy. So you know that's why I'm here. That's rude. First of all, <laughs> second of all, you know the show is live if he's referencing last night's game. It's a nice touch. I just don't like a. I don't like a tank top. I don't. I, I never cared for it. Uh, Joe. Joe's a big fan of the cutoff tank top, which is like <laughs> one more step well, towards white trash. It, yeah, but it, in my defense, it's only because I look so good in them. <laughs> Because of my that, upper arm. Did someone the, tell you that at a young age? The, and you just never color, got it out of your head? The color of my upper arms is so uh, incredibly attractive. Uh, I don't want to sheathe those things. It's just not fair. Just a beautiful auburn olive oil. <laughs> just don't care. I don't care for it. Grant, you look, uh, you Hello, look like fellow a, children. a rapper <laughs> or like a teacher trying to reach... Children, right? <laughs> How do I get the through to these kids? <laughs> these kids, cut off tank top and a real tank top. I don't care for it. Matthew, I bet you uh, saw a lot of tank tops in your day <laughs> while you were running through the fire hydrants and the streets of Paramus. <laughs> <laughs> the only the only thing I like that I've ever worn is I had to wear a singlet as part of my cross country uniform in high school. So I was running, though not in Paramus. Uh, <laughs> Have you so, ever had chafed but, nipples, Matthew? I want to know if you've ever had chafed nipples. Got to tape uh, them up. I I did have I like once. It wasn't a thing. Like there was like a week of my life where I was having that problem. But uh, luckily, uh, I've been afflicted <laughs> with other conditions from my running, but not uh, not too many chafed nipples. I like the uh, t-shirt under a tank top look. Don't 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 sleep on that. <laughs> before before I, before I That's decided. That's how you get away with wearing a basketball jersey to work. <laughs> Before I decided on this awful look for tonight's show, I did it with a t-shirt on it. I just went, no, I can't. That's no, that's worse. It was worse somehow. <laughs> but if I had like an Under Armour, like grippy feeling thing, and like I had like those elbow pads that everyone wears now, then it would be cool. Like, you know, those, the, those hexagonal pads on the end that you can hit people in the face with? That yeah, the compression sleeves. Right. <laughs> right. The only thing worse than that is like the guy that got off his job at Wall Street wearing a button down. Uh, underneath, uh, like a brand new Ewing jersey at the really? Knicks game. I've never, <laughs> oh, seen, never seen that. Uh -uh. Oh yeah, buttoned down, buttoned all the way up, uh, with no tie and uh, a tank top. Uh, That's the douchiest it. possible look. Oh yeah, it doesn't yeah, get could... worse than that. You <laughs> bought you... it in the pro shop, 
and you have your like suit jacket on the chair and you're just Jesus draped it over Christ. your tucked yep. in button down. <laughs> I was recently watching with my wife how to lose a guy in 10 days. The, uh, uh, the Matthew McConaughey. Is that her? Kate right? we, no. I just watched that with my wife. <laughs> did you Did you see the whole scenes at the NBA finals between yes. the Knicks and the Sacramento Kings? <laughs> <laughs> <Is that true? laughs> oh, and they man. filmed it with the actual players there, and it was just a raucous, hilarious poo show. It was just. And they say <laughs> fantasy films don't make money. <laughs> yeah. Skid, I can't imagine you're a big tank top guy. I don't think I've ever seen you in shorts. I'm wearing shorts right now, actually. But well, you're right. I can prove it. <laughs> no, but I no. I used to wear. I used to love basketball, like Grant, as a kid. I mentioned going to basketball camp and being busted for a bag of cocaine uh, a while ago. <laughs> but it was a different uh, time. It was a different time. It was. It really was. Yeah, yeah. Pete. <laughs> and so I, I had a lot of NBA jerseys, I had my Nuggets jerseys and stuff, but I was painfully skinny. I was really, really like bone thin skinny. So I would wear them, but I would do the Georgetown like T-shirt underneath. I would, that's the only way I would go out in one. Did you ever get the uh, pro jersey with your name, your last name on the back? No, no. Well, let me stupid. blow your mind, Troy. I got a few of those. No. Oh, no. I always thought that was no. so weird. No. Oh, no, no, there's nothing know, we, on there. My buddy and I went through that phase with like pro hockey jerseys when we were kids. We were just like, La Valley, 55. I, I decided to follow uh, Skid's advice, which I've also heard from other people, but he most recently brought it up, which is to not get an active player's name on your back because you never know who they might murder. You so, never know. And yeah. also now that I'm uh, in my mid thirties, uh, mid to late thirties, uh, there are very few players that are not younger than I am. And I can't have a younger person's name on my back. That's weird. To Isn't me. that weird that that's like weird. the, the ball part? players are now like 20 years younger than you? <laughs> well, that's where I'm at. I'm like, oh, they, that guy, I'm 20 years older than that particular player. <laughs> I could be his father. Sell, you know that there's companies now that sell Jersey insurance. If you buy yes. a jersey, you can insure the jersey. Because a lot of these jerseys are like 300 bucks. Yeah. And so you pay a couple bucks to these companies, they insure it. If anything happens to the player, if they leave the franchise, if they do something terrible, it's, so you can get your money back. No, it's <laughs> great. I had that insurance. I got six defunct jerseys in there. Oh, yeah. Know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will always... never buy a current player jersey ever again. Smart. I was always really jealous of the people who shared a last name with someone on their favorite team and they could Ooh. just buy that jersey mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. like oh, they didn't cool. have to get the custom. They just yeah. get that one. That's like 15 bucks right there. There aren't a whole lot of O'Briens killing it in professional sports. <laughs> I was thinking about getting, there was the a big four, at least <laughs> a, a teammate of uh, Ayrton Senna, one of the greatest F1 drivers of all time. Last name was Berger. And I want to get like one of their like race things. Like it'd be really cool just to have, and he's, you know, he could be my dad. So it, it's perfect for me. He fits the age. He has the last name and I F1 sport. Perfect. Well, your outfit is inappropriate tonight, and uh, <laughs> it's going to turn off new viewers because they're going to think, oh, who are these douchebags? Right. <laughs> Tank, Tank top McGillicuddy over there. Right. Coming over from they Miami are. Beach, tabletop <laughs> role playing with Grant Berger. Uh, I actually well, you know, I'll stick around because it's a pretty has. diverse cast. So. I, I actually <laughs> am also the lead singer in a Limp Biscuit cover band, <laughs> which is why I'm dressed like this. Is everyone ready to keep rolling, 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 rolling? <laughs> There goes another hundred of names. If only we could find that Venn diagram between Limp Biscuit fans <laughs> and uh, Side Quest Side Stash fans. Uh, well, we uh, we started a little late tonight, and uh, we're gonna end a little early because that's the show. Uh, I don't really think there's any reason to, to go on. Nothing we can do from here is gonna be better than last week's uh, no. no slug fest. That was insane. Yeah. Insane. I've I've now I've watched it a, a couple of times, getting it ready for the the YouTube, and then uh, obviously being there while we were playing. And it's just crazy how many opportunities were had on both sides, uh, and it just uh, it just didn't work out. And uh, you know, I posted something earlier this week of what my original plan for the start of this episode was, because uh, it presumed uh, this party was uh, ready to go but so much has changed so much has changed let's jump right in
Let's find <gasps> out. <gasps> no! Let's just find out what the hell is going on. Oh, man. Fwing, fwing, fwing! The last sounds you hear before we fade to black. Wish it was a real season finale. We had like six months before this episode. <laughs> can't do that in podcasting because you'll lose your audience. It sucks. I would love six months off. <laughs> fwing, fwing, fwing. As you stand there, Karzor, looking at this haunting dais from behind. A familiar dais, one in which you saw Fetchlings, Kyle, almost burnt at the stake not two, three days ago. You and your friends came to their rescue. Now you see the three remaining guillotine blades all fall. <laughs> Followed by three lifeless and apparently headless bodies falling limp to the floor behind. You think you recognize them. That clothing looks like the clothing of your traveling companions, possibly your former traveling companions. You're not 100% sure, but you've been with them for a while, from first to fourth level. Yeah. You know the you know their clothes. They're like cartoon characters. They never really change their outfit. As you're watching this go down and you hear shouts from the crowd of 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 shock and awe and maybe even a couple daring to protest. Oh no. Roll a perception check. Oh, uh 24. 24. Perception isn't really your jam, so that's a very high roll. You're standing there watching this. All your attention is drawn towards that. But you feel the presence of someone very close to you. And you turn and you look, and about three feet away, there is a shadowy figure standing in the alleyway near you. And you have no idea how long they have been standing there. A voice comes out. You can't really make out features. You need to go far from here. It is not safe for you. If Nekesor finds you, you will suffer the same fate as your friends. Karazor casts one last glance over his shoulder at his fallen comrades looks back who are you who am i the voice comes out of the shadows and then a tall man steps out in a homespun cape with a blue mask covering his face call me major domo <laughs> <laughs> As he appears, he's gone. <laughs> sir, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Karazor pulls his cloak tight and pulls the hood down so that no one can tell who he is. And he slinks off through the alleyways, ashamed to leave, ashamed and heartbroken that he had to leave his companions this way, but seeing no choice. We see Karazor run away from Carpad down the empty cobblestone alleyways. And again, I always think in terms of cinematic, like we follow him and then the camera comes up and back and we watch his body just kind of slink away into the night. And then we pan upwards towards a waning gibbous moon and a starlit sky. It looks similar to Joe's screen. 
And slowly that starlit sky cross fades <laughs> to a blue sky with a bright yellow sun. And now we pan slowly down from the sun and the blue sky to see the severed head of Braven from the side. How do we know it's Braven? We just see the right ear and it's clipped on the top. Oh. A sacrifice that was made in the chapel of Zon Kuthan. In the background, out of focus, we can see what are most likely the heads of Stepan and Anya Baroy, the Baron and Baroness of Carpad. From Braven, we pan across slowly and see the head of the crystal ghost. Her hair barely covering the features of her maskless face. And then finally, inches away, a raven pecks at the left eye of the decapitated head of Alfonso Moria. Oh. Just pecking away at the eye. It almost has uh, the eye dislodged before a shovel comes down and crushes the bird, leaving nothing but a puddle behind. Shoo, shoo! The Baron wants these. See that shovel scoop up Alfonso's head, throw it into a bag. Sound of the shovel scooping up other heads continues as her eyes are drawn to something lying in the dirt in the distance, near the dais, near the heads. So we inch closer to this thing in the dirt. And as we slowly move along at ground level, a pale skinned slender arm reaches down and picks this thing out of the dirt. We see that it is the crystal ghost's mask. The Kyle picks up the mask, puts it on their face and turns. We don't see who it is turns, looks up, and stares at the hill where Baroy Manor stands, overlooking all of Carpat. And as they are watching the crest of the Baroys, a black bear, couchant against the starry sky, those flags are being pulled down, and a new flag is being raised with the silver mask of Nikesor. We close in on that image of Nikesor's face, and it slowly morphs into that of a dog's fang on a wooden sign swaying in the breeze. Donk, 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 donk. We hear the sound of boats, water sloshing, whistling nearby, chatter. In wooden letters along the side of this building, facing the docks, it says, The Hound's Tooth Tavern. We enter, and we hear the sounds of a three-piece band wailing away at a drinking, sound, uh, a drinking song. There's a crowd full of stevedores, seamen, and working-class folk just swaying back and forth, singing along to the song. They're spilling their cheap beer onto the floor. Amidst this crowd, we then close in on a table with two figures, one of average height and one particularly small, cloaked figures perhaps, and they're sitting with a substantially larger person. What does the Average size cloaked person look like, Joe? Oh, I guess we would say average sized, huh? All right. That'll take it. <laughs> um, yes, average sized human man, middle aged, late 30s, perhaps uh, built strongly. Uh, looks like he could handle himself in a fight. Um, 
appears to be an adventurer. He's got dark brown skin that looks like like leather from just years of sun and sand and it, and the road. Um, he's balding, close co- uh, close cropped black hair around the sides and back. He's got a mustache and a goatee with flecks of gray hairs throughout and a scar, vicious scar runs along the side of his neck. Seems like it's maybe just an inch or two from a killing stroke. Uh, there's darkness in the circles around his eyes that make him appear weary, but there's also a brightness within those same eyes that uh, reveal a, a hint of his sort of natural insight and, uh, and zest for knowledge. He is heavily armored uh, in a breastplate and gauntlets, even at the bar. Uh, heavy boots and a beautiful morning star hangs from a sheath at his side while a regular looking sling is tied to the other side of his belt. His breastplate has a white symbol painted on it, an enclosed six pointed star, but it's barely visible uh, and wearing away uh, within the armor. That same symbol is actually fashioned to a piece of jewelry, too, that hangs on a fine chain around his neck. And there are two rectangular leather bags hanging at his sides, one large and one small. The larger one has a flap partially open where you can see a whole bunch of rolled parchments sort of sticking out uh, all over each, uh, uh, mixed in all over each other. And then there's a smaller leather satchel that is just closed tight. And he's sitting there uh, laughing with his companions. To your left uh, is a, uh, a man, and the reason you're of average height is one of your companions is much, much smaller, and this dude is bigger, just looks beefy. Grant, what does this guy look like? Mm-hmm. He stands a sturdy six foot three inches. Uh, he weighs in, though, at a rippling 240 pounds. Yeah. Stands before you with a chiseled physique, a formidable beard, and long curly brown hair that frames his face. He peers out through smoky aura goggles that hide his eyes. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> He's wearing denim shorts, red leather boots, <laughs> and a tank top. <laughs> wearing denim shorts, red leather boots, and a purple see through mithril chain shirt. That ends <laughs> at his suntanned, hairless navel. <laughs> Veins pop from his oily neck, and he seems restless, unable to relax. The last thing that seems noteworthy to you is that he's wearing a large black leather belt, which with a large blast plate plate that reads M W A. <laughs> To the right of Joe's character, we we look down and we see a a small figure come around to this figure's face. What does this character look like, Matthew? Well, measuring at two foot eleven and weighing a a mean thirty pounds. (laughs) A mean thirty is a figure in a clerical collar. And a simple cleric's robe. And he's a goblin. <laughs> and he, he's got bright green skin. And he's got some uh, closely clo- cropped uh, hair in a male pattern baldness form beneath his, uh, <laughs> his tall ears. And he seems happy to be there. Happy <laughs> to be there. <laughs> The three of you are sitting there uh, enjoying what's left in your cup. The propri- <sighs> proprietor of the Houndstooth, a man by the name of Shade Boxman, approaches your table with another round of drinks. And he, uh, you know, he tries to make small talk with you. Figure he's the type of guy, just from watching him uh, work the room, knows everybody there, doesn't know you. And he's like, I haven't seen you folks around Caliphas. Why the long faces? There's ale, there's women, there's men. Whatever you fancy, you might be an Ustalav. But there are no horrors here in the Houndstooth, unless you end up in bed with old One-Tooth Maggie. 
<laughs> what brings you to Caliphas? We happen to just be passing through, my friend. We may have a bit of a dark demeanor, but that is only because we are a bit tired, and though we would like to enjoy the revelry, we are here uh, on business. In fact, I could ask you, perhaps, well, we make our way to the River Kingdoms. don't know if you are familiar with it, but it is a rather dangerous road we travel, and we could use some more skilled people. I was curious if you knew of anyone here that was making their way to the River Kingdoms. We would prefer to caravan up, if at all possible, and uh, safety in numbers and all that. Of course, you understand. Of course, of course, and I know the River Kingdoms well. I grew up here in Ustalav, but we are neighbors, after all. It's not a place to go on holiday, as it were. Lots of ghosts no. and ghost stories. Uh, I mean, there are no shortage of adventurers here looking for coin and whatnot, but, uh, and he looks at you and the goblins' holy symbol. Uh, they tend to be a little wary of religious types around here. Uh, the gods they worship are the sea gods. Uh, you never know, though. You might get lucky, make some friends, put a smile on your face. This guy over here, he's a real sourpuss, points at Grant's character. Oh, yeah, I might be a bit of a sourpuss, but that's because you look upon my visage and you don't know that you are lucky enough to be gazing upon the MWA Southeastern Heavyweight Champion. That's right, Rafo Ruthless Rumblebeard. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was wondering if you were able to offer me a protein shake and a lean white meat chicken breast. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. <laughs> sure we have some fowl in the back as for the protein shake. No, no, a couple of raw <laughs> eggs and a beer I could do. Oh, 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 well. You may not have seen my holy symbol, and that's because I don't want to hide this glorious body from the world. But I worship at the altar of Caden, Caitlin, my friend. And as long as you're pouring me a Michelob Ultra, I can drink all night long. It's a lovely uh, mithril purple half shirt you have. I'll uh, I'll get go go get that beer and eggs. He just starts flexing, just all over the place. And he, uh, he leaves. At that moment, an MC takes the stage. The uh, other band that was playing ends. Like, Give it up for uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire Elementals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bottle cap. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, we got a newcomer to the stage tonight. Uh, new to the Houndstooth. Uh, please uh, give a warm Califas welcome to our next act. And he reads from a card, uh, the musical stylings of Johnny Halfling. <laughs> and then uh, a small halfling takes the stage. Skid, what does he look like? <gasps> <laughs> so, oh my God. You see, uh, oh my God. a three foot seven halfling comes out onto the stage. <laughs> and he's wearing this uh, a chainmail shirt that is made of brilliantly polished alchemical silver, and it's reflecting like all the lights, all the lights in the in the place. And he comes out, and there's a sort of bemused silence as he kind of drags the stool across the table as it squeaks and echoes across the room, and he sets it up just right, and. He uh, pulls out from uh, from his pocket that looks like a wand with like a, a globe uh, on the end of it, and he he taps it a couple of times and he speaks the words of activation. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, uh, hey everybody! Uh, my name is uh, Johnny Halfling. Thank you for that wonderful introduction and. As uh, the man says, I'm new in town, but uh, I've got a little song that you might enjoy about someone I think you might like to get to know. 
and he holds up his hand. The, the, the one hand has a glove on it, the other hand is, is naked, and there's a symbol on it, there's this birthmark on it, and he holds it up and he whispers some words, and these colored lights like burst everywhere, and this music seems to start from nowhere. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey. <laughs> when the old bites with his teeth dead, scarlet pillows from your head, fancy gloves though, where's old Johnny Hapling? There is never, never a trace of red. If you like beauty, if you like music, if you like paintings, if you like stuff, hey, well, I think Shailen may be the guy for you, babe. Because old Johnny Halfling, he just can't get enough. And the song goes on for a while. Uh, several more verses. And he's just getting really into it. He's like pu putting his whole heart and soul into it. And he's just working his ass off up on stage. <laughs> he just sprayed his face for the oh, crowd. He's he soaked and, in sweat now. <laughs> and he, he finally gets to the final, the final verse. He says, that's why Johnny is back in time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Johnny is back. Yeah. <laughs> I and tell he you, he's down, too hot like, to handle. He's too cold to hold. <laughs> <laughs> and he wow. slides down on his knees. And there is absolutely no response from the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> virtual stun silence. Maybe a, a lone clapper in the back. <laughs> hey, uh, 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 thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, like I say, my name is Johnny Halfling. Uh, if uh, you're interested in uh, some T-shirts, uh, it's a tu t tunic. It's a, a tunic shirt. It's a, I know not everyone's up on the showbiz lingo in these parts. We got some T-shirts, and if you're interested in the teaching of Shaylin's, uh, I got some uh, pamphlets too. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, have a, bye. And he, then he just kind of slinks off stage. Oh, the MC's heads like, to the merch uh, table. One more round of applause for Johnny Halfling. Uh, all right. Uh, our next band is The Cure, Light Wounds. Uh, <laughs> goth band comes up. <laughs> and... The three of you just kind of uh, all follow this uh, now uh, a little bit sad looking uh, halfling go over to a merch table and start setting up his wares and, and no one's going over to buy anything. <laughs> and the, the goblin starts doing an awkward salmon to uh, <laughs> to Joe's character whose name I... Do, you, do we know your name yet? No, no, no. So um, he starts whacking Joe's character. What about that guy? Have you ever bias. seen anything like that in your life? <laughs> oh, I've seen a great many things. You have, and you have I, and you have you and I have been to many taverns together, and I've never seen an act like that. I will say, though, have to admire his dedication. Yes, and uh, Shay did say that there were a few too many people in here that were not going to side with us because of their worship of these sea gods. So perhaps, I don't know, what do you think? Follower of Shailen, trustworthy at the very least, right? Well, I really responded to his character after minutes three and four of his song went by and he still was giving it his all. <laughs> there was so much meaning in those lyrics. <laughs> I lost my track eye. for a while, but uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to talk to him. I'll come with you. <laughs> uh, Rafael, are you joining or would you like to hold the table? 
Uh, I'll join, brother. Expect the unexpected in the kingdom of madness. And that was pretty mad, brother. (laughs) By the way, when we picked you up the other day, you had not mentioned this, what was it? Championship. Is that what it was? A title of some kind. Oh, this is the championship title belt of the Magnamar Wrestling Association. (laughs) Southeastern (laughs) Division, brother. (laughs) <laughs> You're looking at the man who killed Madigan the Mauler in the ring. I meant to put him in a sleeper hold, but he's dead, brother, and I'm on the run. <laughs> but until I'm someone so beats me, about... until someone beats me, they can't take this title belt away from me, brother. <laughs> well, kudos. Yes. Thank you. And finally, someone's giving me the 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 the, the credit I deserve. <laughs> you know, uh, before we hired you, I really do wish you had mentioned that you were a murderer uh, <laughs> on the run. But what's done is done. Oh, you know, there's no one beyond redemption in Phrasma's eyes. No, that is certainly true. Mm-hmm. All right, let us make our way to the merch booth. <laughs> uh, I check for traps. <laughs> Natural twenty. There are uh, traps all, right. all the way on the floor. <laughs> the t-shirts right, so, are wildly overpriced. So yeah, this uh, the, so this guy, as long as we're doing heights and weights, 5'10", 181 walks up to uh, the uh, the the merch booth to Johnny Halfling. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Johnny, is it? Hey! Oh, yeah. Uh, how's it going? <laughs> uh, hey, for those of you listening to the show. pod, you have to tune in. You have to tune in <laughs> for Skid right now. It's amazing. Yes. Go find <laughs> it on YouTube. <laughs> He's dabbing the sweat from his forehead with a pink towel. <laughs> What's up? What's up, man? Hi. Uh, well, first of all, I, I was very impressed with your show, and I would like, if I may to browse your wares here. I, I saw you have t-shirts. Yes, uh, what else? What else is here? Yeah, please. Yeah, I mean, help yourself and take a look at the tunic shirts. I have some with uh, the symbol of Desna on them. I mean, uh, um, Shailen on them. And uh, I have, that's that's pretty much it. And then I have these, I've got a ton of these pamphlets, um, if you're interested. I have, I've got this one, uh, what can Shailen do for me? Um, <laughs> What Shaylin did for me. Um, <laughs> how can Shaylin help me? How Shaylin help me? There's a bunch of them. I just, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> I'll tell you what. So, I'll, t- I'll take a tunic shirt and a large. Then he oh, goes into amazing. a coin purse. Okay. And uh, uh, I would like to buy you a drink, if I may. When you're done here, of course, uh, would you join us? Could, oh, I, yeah. could I buy you around? Sure. Oh, my God. I, I got uh, Shailen. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, we're, we're right over here. That that table right there. You can't miss us. Look, just look out for this giant. Oh, thank God. Points to Rafa. Okay, but, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, let me just uh, box this up. Uh, that's that's uh, that's one one sale is more than I've uh, made ever. So I'll just box this up and uh, and I'll be right over. <laughs> so we'll go back and sit down. Uh, all right, so you go back and sit down, and uh, you have three almost full drinks at this point. Uh, you maybe you flag down Shade, and uh, he comes over and uh, takes the uh, presumptive order for Johnny yeah. Halfling. Yeah. And then after a couple minutes, Johnny comes over with all his boxes. Hey, hey guys! Oh man, hi. Gosh, is it okay? Can I sit down? Is that is that cool? Absolutely, Please. of course. Oh, thank you. Join us. Join us. Now I tell saw us. you guys. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I saw you guys from the stage. It was like, oh, that's a cool looking group of guys. I wonder <laughs> what they're, what's going on over there. Like, wow. <laughs> Not as cool as you, I'm afraid. Really oh, enjoyed no. your performance. <laughs> what? Really? Oh, that's, that's great, man. Oh, I, l- man, that's I, so I nice loved it, brother. Anyone that can get on the stage and show the world their stuff has got my respect. I'll tell you what, you know, it's just something, it just came to me, you know, it was like, I was never a performer. I was just never, just never was bitten really? by the bug. Yeah. 
And then it was like I had I was <laughs> I, I, I'm going to my whole whole spiel, okay? Like I was <laughs> I was blessed I, by a vision from the goddess herself, and I saw this angel just with these glittering lights and and singing this incredible song that I couldn't quite make out, but the tune just stuck with me. And I knew, I knew from that point on, this was the way that I could reach my flock. Mm. I knew that like this, the music was the key to saving souls, you know? So I started the next day and like the parishioners, they loved it. They loved it. And in fact, they were so enthusiastic that they were like, you know what? You should, you shouldn't waste this on us. You should just close up shop here in town and just hit the road. And in fact, they said, if you ever come back, we'll run away in the other direction. That's how serious we are about this. And I was like, I hate to leave you guys, but if you're that, if you're that adamant about it, I was like, okay. And so, you know, I've been on the road for a while and uh, to be honest, the money's kind of run out and um, all I have is these pamphlets and the, t the tunics. Ah, oh, well, it seems you're in luck. You've come We're to the right place. We're also in need of some cash. Oh no by way. The way! Are you are you in any way afflicted by uh, how do I put this smoothly? Demonic possession? No, 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 no! It was just the one time, uh, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was Shaylin. So, pretty sure or sure? Pretty sure. Pretty sure. I'd be happy to check that out for you, and I can offer discount rates. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, if you have a sliding scale, I mean, that would be amazing. Um, sure. Oh, how rude of us. We haven't told you our names. We all know your name, but not you don't know ours. Oh, my name, right. My name is Vernon J. Crabapple. Exorcist for hire. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. <clears throat> I am... These are my friends. <laughs> yes. I am Zakari Al-Jadish, a... Medica of Kadira. Ooh. My name's Rafo Rumblebeard, and I follow <laughs> these two holy men wherever they go, and if anything gets in the way of their willpower, this muscle power, this superpower will step in the way to stop them. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's so great. I love this guy. I love your belt. God, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. And he takes it off, and then he shows it to the whole crowd. Like, he puts it over his head. He finds, like, a post to stand on. <sighs> and no one looks at him. <laughs> yeah. As I was saying, uh, <laughs> wait for Rafa to sit back down. Uh, you are in luck, friend. We have, uh, not only do we have something rather in common, I know of this experience of which you speak. I, too, was visited by one of the great deities of our pantheon, and it was an incredible experience. Changed my life as well. Whoa. And all that I do. Really? Yes. I'm afraid you, afraid you, you probably don't... have not heard of him. He goes by the name Esokar. He is a, I'm afraid, in our day and age, a fallen deity. One who is long forgotten, but he still exists. And it is, this is the secret I am privileged to know. I shall tell you all about him if we have the time. But right now, I think our focus should be on teaming up, is what I say. We are about to head to the Riverlands, and we are dead set on making a lot of money. I... Great. I, I was just saying to myself, it's like, man, I'd love to go to the Riverlands, but there's a lot of people up there that A, like music, and B, are ready to be taught about the goddess Shaylin. So, man. It's like I always say, you might be called to service, but you're not called to starve. <laughs> I like, oh my God, I love that. Hold on. <laughs> and he writes it down. <laughs> it is gold. Yes, you are, Johnny. Uh, it is quite incredible how fate has brought us together. You join us in the Riverlands, and there will be no shortage of body bandit crowds that would love to see your act. And with us right here, we have one of the most famous bouncers in all of Magnamar, who could protect you from anyone who got a little handsy, if you know what okay. I mean. Okay, okay. I won't, I won't lie, that's been a problem. <laughs> been on the road, so that would be very refreshing to have someone protect me in that in that way. So okay, I, 
I do not know how to lay hands, but I am happy to lay hands on anyone who gets in your way. But I have one favor to ask you, brother. Yeah? Would, would you be willing to work on some ring entrance music for me? <laughs> of, of course. Of course. Oh, my God. I'd be thrilled. I'm thinking something real splashy. Maybe some... Yep. Uh, Maybe some <laughs> magically fortified loot. I don't know. Something edgy. Okay, I like it. Do you think? Would you be? Would you be dead set against me working in some sort of religious elements into the ring music? I would just make it vague, you know. <laughs> okay. Kind of like God. Oh, not at all. A, a God yeah, power. Yeah, I don't want to hit him over the head yeah. with it. Just kind of like it'll be there, and we'll. Yeah, okay. Like, is there I any? Like what, what is Shalen's imagery? Like, I'm more of a Caden Kalen type of guy. Oh, uh, birds. It's like real big on like peacocks. Oh, those are pretty and, badass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, I could probably work something up. Like, do a couple of designs of like a really cool sort of like peacock themed outfit for you to wear in the in the ring. Okay. The end of that. All right. Um, <laughs> put can... that second on the list after the theme okay. song, the sweet theme song that talks yeah. about how powerful. Sweet theme song. So just, for... yeah, just... man. Let's start. With... Let's prioritize All right. sweet theme song. <laughs> All right, brother. And he shoves his hand out to shake uh, Johnny Halfling's hand, and they just they 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 put it square and fair right there. The glove. <laughs> <laughs> I like That's your so glove, amazing. brother. Oh, thanks. It came with the with the sh with the with the, the thing, and it you see it has these. It's like a chain shirt that's that's gleaming reflectively, and it's got these like black lapels on it that go down to his waist. Uh. <laughs> so uh, the four of you are uh, you have a couple more uh, beers. You talk. You get to know each other, and it seems like you have found someone to join your group. From what I'm getting, uh, it sounds like you, meaning Joe and Matthew, uh, Zakiri and Vernon. Zakari. Zakari and Vernon. Uh, Vern for short. Hired uh, <laughs> Rafo? Rafo. Rafo, yes. Rafo. Uh, we needed a little more. Raffo? We need yes, very recently we needed a little more muscle, and he told us he had uh, done some time as a bouncer. Thought this was perfect. Rafo? Not to put too fine a point on it, but we're facing a little heat in the Mirror Kingdoms. Oh, you're yes, gonna, don't, you're Vernon, gonna don't mention that. <laughs> you're gonna see more heat than you could ever imagine with Rafo, quote unquote, ruthless Rumblebeard by your side. We generally so want to keep a low profile. <laughs> Generally speaking. You'll have to look, fill me in on what that means on the road. <laughs> <laughs> so Zakari, Vern, and uh, Rafo uh, now have the services of Johnny Halfling with them as well. What is your goal? Where are you trying to get in the River Kingdoms? Because the River Kingdoms are uh, well, we're gonna large. pass. We're going to pass through to the north, um, basically, without getting too far into it. Um Zakari and Vern are kind of persona non grata in Daggermark. And so that's a little more to the south. So, but he, we have to get back to the River Kingdoms for reasons that will be explained later. And so we're going to edge up to the north towards, um, through the Echo Wood, basically, uh, because there's potential ruins there to make some money. And, uh, and hopefully get to a town called Bodhi's Haunt, uh, which is where my friend Vern might be able to make us a few bucks with his skills as a uh, exorcist. I'm He's done this before. He's kept us afloat before. Yes. <laughs> Bodhi's Haunt sits uh, to the north of the Echo Wood, uh, right near the border of the River Kingdoms and uh, Numeria, I believe. And it is... Uh, sort of rumored to be a place full of pirate ghosts. Um, but perhaps in the ruins, <laughs> you'll be able to uh, find what it is you're looking for. Let's go to a map. You guys are in the uh, southernmost point of Ustalav here. So let's look at uh, where you are in Galarian and where you are trying to go. Uh, let's go to the video tape. Can you guys oh, this all is, see? This is a nice cut. A nice cut of the old inner sea map. You like yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, not the highest uh, res that I'd like, but it gets the job done. So if you look down here, 
near Avalon Bay, uh, you see Caliphas. This is uh, uh, yes. the capital here, um, right, right on the southern tip. Um, so your goal is to get. So you want to kind of go up north, north, to the northeast, east through Ustalav to get to the Echo Wood and Bodie's. What is it? Bodie's what? Bodie's haunt. haunt? Yeah, Bodhi's it is haunt. right around here to the north. It really is right near the border of the River Kingdoms and Numeria. Um, so rather than just cutting through uh, Razmiran, you're going to go up and around. You feel like that's the safest route, and it's certainly the more traveled route. Um, as you see right there is good old Thrushmore, which will come into play in a later date at a city near you at Glass Cannon Live. But uh, <laughs> for the time being... We'll say you guys don't have enough coin to stay at even the cheapest inn in Kalifas for the night. So you spend uh, perhaps yet another night in the woods, saving some money. Getting to know each other, maybe have a couple more, uh, couple more pops back at the campsite. Get to know each other the best way possible drinking and hanging into the night. Uh, because not only is Johnny Halfling a new companion to you, but... Uh, Rafo is as well. You spend the night in the woods and you wake up to the sound of rain pelting all of your makeshift lean-tos that you made just in case to keep dry because the weather has been uh, pretty unpredictable as of late. Um, so eventually you get your stuff together, you break camp and start heading north-northeast. You feel like knowing what you know of the geography here, if you make good time, uh, you could probably cross the border into the River Kingdoms by nightfall. However, as you start out, the rain is just steady enough to make travel slower than you'd like. Right from the moment you woke up, the skies were dark and overcast. You know those kind of days where it's like 10 in the morning and it feels like it's 6 o'clock at night? Mm -hmm. It kind of feels like that all day long. And it's, uh, it's a real mood killer. So after the, you know, that excitement of the newness of last night, it, it kind of goes away quickly as you're just trudging through this uh, bad weather day. And as the day wears on, it's not getting any better. It's not really getting any worse, but it's just steadily annoying. Uh, maybe your boots have soaked through to your socks and you're just walking with wet feet, which is the worst. <laughs> socks. Sucks. The worst. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're like, well, I'm going to be outside for the next six hours, so uh, I'm screwed. So you trudge through these wet carriage paths all day. And a few hours before evening falls... Uh, you pass the swampy southern banks of the Kingfisher River, and up ahead you see a large city. It's built upon a towering mound that looks out over the land and the forest around here. And you think, like, maybe you might be able to afford an inn here. Uh, maybe you'll find something cheaper than the slightly more cosmopolitan Caliphas. Might as well go through there. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to go through this town, grab a drink, and then camp out again somewhere. You're not going to make it to the River Kingdoms tonight, it doesn't look like. So you pass over the river, find a bridge, get over. It's a little less swampy on the other side, but it's still muddy from the rain. And you enter town. And the first thing you notice as you walk into town, there's no sign of anyone about and there's plenty of buildings, plenty of businesses, plenty of homes, um, but there's no one walking around. All of the windows to the houses and the shops are shuttered. There's no foot traffic. You don't even see like horses uh, outside or domestic animals walking around. Um, there are no bums or just people sleeping out in the street. It's very interesting. So you keep walking, and you're walking for like 10, 15 minutes, just kind of wandering through uh, what feels like a ghost town. Um, sometimes you feel like you see a shutter is open and then it closes. Sometimes you feel like there might be a light in a window somewhere, but it's just a very odd feeling. Rain pelting down on the cobblestones, rivulets of water running through the town, but not a sight or sound of anyone. 
15, 16, 17 minutes of just kind of wandering around, figuring out like, where's where's a bar? We've got to be, 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 be at the bar watching the uh, watching the NBA finals. <laughs> you you hear in the distance someone yelling, but it doesn't sound like they're yelling for help. Uh, it more sounds like like an announcement or a proclamation. There's a repetitive nature to it, but you can't make out the words because it's still a little far away. Um, and eventually, up ahead in the distance, turning the corner, you see like a town crier coming around, and he's surrounded by a number of uh, look like guardsmen. They're all dressed in uh, black, identical outfits, hoods covering their heads, scarves muffling their faces so you can't see their features. Uh, and they're kind of surrounding the crier as he walks through and they're echoing what he says through their muffled scarts and uh as he gets closer you start to make out what he says and he's he almost feel like he's speaking to you because there's no one else there but he's looking all around at the the shuttered windows and he's like carrion hill needs heroes Men and women of stout heart and bravery are asked to come to Crown Manor. He points behind him. Come there with all haste, there to receive a task worthy of their skill and talents and a reward of suitable magnificence. Make haste to Crown Manor. Make haste. And all the guardsmen are echoing, Make haste, crown manor, reward of suitable magnificence. And uh, he passes by you and and nods at you and starts just repeating his spiel again as they walk past and continue rolling down these empty streets. What do you guys do? Did he say reward? That did rather jump out. At me, yes. Yeah, I heard that part pretty pretty clearly. He said something, Vern, about brave adventurers. I think they need look no further. I mean, that's what they say about me. No haunting too haunted. <laughs> and these people, I don't know. They seem like they possibly are rather haunted. No one is in the streets. What is going on here? Yeah, it's a weird, weird vibe. I expected to see the watch right at the city gates. Why would they not speak with us as we came through? Something definitely wrong here. Yeah. Well, let's know. go to Crown Manor and figure it out. Yeah, let's go to Crown cash. Manor and see how we can help. Out of curiosity, if nothing else. And Rafa. for cash. And for cash. <laughs> <laughs> and for cash. And for cash. Uh, all right. Yeah, we'll go up there. All right. So he just kind of absentmindedly pointed in this direction. But you see there's a main street that's leading up the hill. And you do see a manor house in the distance. So rain pelting away at the stones you follow in that direction. And now you're getting a deeper sense of the city. And you see that in spite of how densely packed the buildings are together and how well worn the streets appear to be with the exception of those guards and the crier there is no one about you see a murder of crows rather than you know perching themselves below an underpass during the storm uh they've taken wing above and they start circling and crying out in fearful tones it's the first sign of life you see with the exception of those guards just Mm. All the shops are closed. You peer down alleyways that one would be imagine one would imagine be full of whores and beggars, and they're empty as well. Nothing. As you get closer and closer to what you think is Crown Manor, the rain begins to fall even more heavily, drenching all of you as rivers of water start running down the central gutters in the roads throughout the city. You're going uphill, so the water is just rushing towards you. You feel like you're walking on water in many ways. You finally approach the manor, ominous, old, ancient, been here for a long time. And as you approach two guardsmen dressed in black leather armor and chains, wielding bows and long swords, stand guard out front. They see you approach and there's a look of shock 
in their eyes. Uh, their somber expressions flicker with hope, and, and, and then they wave to you. They're like, are you here to take up the call? Uh, no, no, this way, this way, please, come. And they Are we you. the first? Uh, uh, no, there, there might be others in there, but uh, they're going to be glad to see you, please. Come on in. And they just wave you, uh, all dripping wet, towards a, a hallway. They open up the door. I'll walk through. All right, so you guys come in. Excuse me. Uh, yes? I'm sorry, what town is this? I mean, you don't know, this is Carrion Hill. Ah, sorry, no, we did not see anyone on the way in except the crier, and we didn't want to interrupt his crying. Can I can I do a knowledge local <laughs> about <a> Carrion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it would be crying. <laughs> can I do a knowledge local about Carrion Hill to see if I know anything? I'll yeah, aid. Sure. I aid. Uh, that is a 18, uh, 20. Okay. Um, it is... Uh... It's an old, old city, and uh, rumor has it that, like, it's been around for a long time, and it's always been unsettling because the generations before uh, are, like, within the hill itself. They've just kept building up and over, so the ruins of the past versions of the city are beneath this hill. And so a lot of people don't know, don't know why anyone would live there, especially if you're at all superstitious, because it's like a town that's full of you know, ghost stories. Um, but yet people have always lived here. Um, and it's been around for a long, long time. It was a, a holy site, uh, back in the day for the local Kelid tribes. Mm. Hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's up on the hill and yeah. Burial mound. Right. So you're waved in to the hall and you, you come in and, and, and you're dripping wet and, uh, you, you kind of walk in and you, you gather yourselves, you brush off some of the water and you see that several members of the guards uh, stand at attention uh, while a man uh, dressed in noble clothing uh, sits in a tall backed chair in the center back of the room and he's just kind of like, he's like biting his nails and looking out a nearby window at the rain. Um, and the guards kind of <clears throat> cough under their breath. And the guy looks over and sees you. There's no one else there besides the guards and this guy sitting in the chair. Um, and, and when he when he sees you, he, he straightens himself up and uh, kind of dusts off his outfit. And he's like, uh, ha, yes, well, at least we've uh, got a few backbones still upright in this place. Uh, uh, please um, uh, make yourselves uh, comfortable. Um, but may I ask your, your names? I am Zakiri. Uh, Zakari. I don't know my own name yet. I am Zakari. And uh, he'll let you guys introduce yourselves. I'm Vernon J. Crabapple. J. Crabapple, Zakari. And, and, and you, sir, points to Grant's character. They call me Ruffo Rumblebeard, and I'm standing upright and undefeated right before your eyes, brother. Excellent, excellent. That would be good. And and you, sir? Johnny's a little bit freaked out by the atmosphere here, knowing its history, especially. He says, um, my name's uh, Jonker Bog Poppet. Uh, but I'm, uh, most people uh, know me uh, as Johnny Half, Johnny Halfling. Well, uh, I, I am glad you have all uh, come here. I, I knew it was only a matter of time before someone uh, mustered up the courage to uh, help us this day. I, my name is uh, Vanton Hegri. I am the mayor here of uh, Carrion Hill. Uh, uh, allow me to explain. I, uh, I, first of all, I, I, again, I cannot stress enough how much uh, I and, and all of us thank you for uh, attending us in our hour of need. You see, I, I don't know how much you know of our town, but Carrion Hill has a, a long history of battle, yet always in the past uh, our enemies have attacked from outside of our walls. Um, and, and we are fortified to defend against such attacks. We have been for, for many, many years, centuries, but now um, we face an entirely different threat. He's kind of struggling to get these words out. 
our enemy is already here, uh, dwelling in the tunnels and catacombs below and uh, apparently surfacing to strike without warning. Again, I don't know what you know or what you don't know, but the first of these attacks occurred this very morning uh, when something huge uh, came up from below in a part of the tangles called uh, Slipper Market. I I can uh, have my men show you where this is if it's something you are interested in. Um, This thing, it, it partially destroyed an entire building and killed a half dozen locals before evidently retreating back into the ruins of the structure it destroyed. Uh, the crows, uh, the, my men here, the, the, our guardsmen, the crows were, were swift to reply, uh, led by our own uh, commander, uh, Garrus. He's, again, really struggling to get this out. A very good commander, Commander Garrus, was. But uh, when uh, they arrived, uh, they were slaughtered to the last. All the other guardsmen there, the crows, as it were, they bow their heads solemnly. Uh, You can even tell some that are muffled up, they're holding back tears. This Commander Garrus must have been well-respected. Since then, this morning, this thing has moved on, surfacing no less than... uh, three times in different parts of the city, crushing buildings from below and slaying anyone it finds inside. I've got the entire force of the City Watch in reserve, and with each new event they respond quickly, but the damage is always done But by the time they arrive. Already there is talk of, of war and invasion, but I, I still believe that, that what we face is a single horror. I don't want our people thinking we are being beset upon by uh, Numeria or Last Wall. Uh, it, it is something that is, that is here already. One thing, as far as I know. If we can only figure out what it is, we might be able to defeat it. And, and this is where perhaps uh, your group um, comes in. Uh, this horror has moved on from its initial point of entrance but perhaps if you can explore the ruins of the slipper market uh, the area it first attacked uh, perhaps you can find uh, some sort of clue uh, to tell us what it is we face because we don't even know what it is I'll be blunt I, I do not have the manpower I cannot spare any crows to aid you Uh, for they are needed in keeping order in the streets. Uh, But if you indeed were to do this and and find something, anything about this monster, whatever it is, from below, I I will pay you handsomely. Uh, I will pay you uh, 1,500 gold for solid information and twice again that amount uh, should you decide to aid in defeating this horror. 1,500 for information and then twice that amount if you help rid us of whatever this is. Well, you drive a hard bargain, but uh, we happen to be available for such engagements. Right, gentlemen? Yeah, yeah, that's right, Vern. That's right. Yep, this, is, 100%. This, this is marvelous news. Um, I, I can have my men take you there right now unless you have uh, questions about anything. Is, yes, is a, um, a rush? I'm yeah. afraid I have several questions. Okay, all right. Uh, yes, of course, of course you would. It's, uh, this is a, a strange occurrence and you're, 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 you're new to here. Where, where are you from, may I ask? What Originally, you carry, I uh, was born in the Padishah Empire of Kalesh. I am from the east. I set out from okay. Kadira to come to Avastan. And so, yes, I am relatively new to this land, but I assure you, I am not new to war. I know what it can bring to a people and what it does. It is a vicious thing, and so my first question is, do you have wounded? Do you have them cordoned off in a safe space? Is there someone I can help before we set out to find this thing? Because sometimes life or death could slip away in moments if not cared for properly. Uh, you see, I, I am a medica, graduated from the Vanakan College in Kadira. I know a thing or two of healing, and I would help anyone that's wounded if they do still survive. 
Yeah, I, and I don't have a degree, but I, I can help too if there's anyone hurt. And if there's anyone possessed, that's my speciality. I'm a, I specialize in expulsion, ejection, and ceremonial casting out demons and other spiritual entities. Yeah, he's good. And I've got a PhD in bone crushing. <laughs> but, um, this this is all uh, good good to know. Um, it is my understanding that in each of the incidents, um, there have been no uh, survivors. Since the initial attack in the pre-dawn hours um, and the death of Garrus and his men at dawn itself, uh, there have been, like I said, two other uh, additional incidents, both on the western slope and involving houses uh, just crumbling down into sinkholes. Um, in both cases, uh, the, the pit that has been left over uh, had no apparent entrance to any chambers below. Um, but but the ruins themselves were, were, were slathered and drenched in a, a foul-smelling slime, uh, the likes of which no one here has seen before. Perhaps it will uh, uh, ring a bell uh, to, to you and, and your past studies. Now, I, I should tell you that the public is not aware of the exact nature of these attacks yet, and, and that's by design. At present, the citizens uh, uh, seem to think that hiding in their homes offers protection, but if they were to uh, know, if it was to get out, that the homes themselves seem to offer no safety as they are collapsing into themselves, uh, Carrion Hill would be seized in a panic that would be very difficult to control. I don't think there are any survivors. In fact, we have not even found the bodies of Commander Garrus and his men. The bodies that we have recovered are broken. Broken beyond recognition. Understood. But make no mistake, those that you have not found never give up on the human body. It can survive for an incredibly long period of time. If we move quickly, we may still be able to save some of them. And you'd be amazed what the body can do when it's possessed by spirits. Yes, that is another thing. How is the, well, beyond the obvious fear, does there seem to be any sort of supernatural uh, effects on anyone's mind that you've seen? That is what my friend Vern here specializes in. Discount rates are available. <laughs> To my knowledge, no. Um, if you do go down to the slipper market, uh, there was a, a, a man, a cobbler perhaps, who lives across the street from where the, the first incident took place. I don't know what he saw, if he saw anything, but I believe the, the crows have spoken to him the most of anyone because he seems to be uh, the most knowledgeable about what exactly went down. Uh, as to whether or not he's gone mad, I, I have not received that information, nor have I heard of any mad men or mad women running the streets. No, uh, we shall speak with him. Yes. What is his name again? Uh, Tag Tagus? Uh, and one of the crows uh, speaks up and he's like uh, Tarek Tarek he lives right across from where old man Martian lived okay Question. my second yes after you Van. oh thank you this smell you talk about can you describe it I have not uh, been there in person. It would not be uh, wise for me to be there um, should this thing uh, return uh, but uh, what what did what did you say it smelled like? And uh, one of the men is like, it's, I I I can't I can't describe it. I I never smelled anything like that in my life. Nor have I seen anything that looked like it. It's it's a, a black slime. The, if you look twice, it seems like it moved, but I never saw it moved. It, it smells like death. My men couldn't even stay in the room uh, long enough. They, they had to leave. They were retching outside. It's a sickening, sickening smell. Uh, worse than death. I've smelled death. Can I do a knowledge check based on that information? Uh, yeah, you can try. Um, knowledge... You know, if you're thinking supernatural, you go knowledge arcana. Uh, if you're thinking maybe this is uh, some sort of animal or beast, you can roll knowledge nature. Whatever you think is relevant, just let me know what you're thinking. I've got planes and religion. I'm hoping they'll both be relevant. Okay, try planes. 
And uh, I will try an arcana. And I will try an arcana. <laughs> I got a cool 13. A cool 13. A yeah, 16 a... arcana. Yeah, I mean, uh, neither you really... It doesn't ring a bell, per se. Uh, you've heard of both natural creatures and uh, unnatural creatures that uh, leave behind slime trails. Uh, there's all these stories of like ghosts and poltergeists uh, having uh, ectoplasmic, uh, you know, sort of uh, residue left over where they were. Um, but there's plenty of oozes and uh, creatures that like that's their natural thing. They move and they leave an ooze behind. Mm -hmm. So it, without examining it uh, face to face, it's hard to get a read on what it is or what it could be. Um, do, do you have any other uh, questions? I'm, I, I, I don't want to uh, rush you, but as you can understand, we've already had three of these today. Uh, there's no telling when or where or if it will uh, strike again. Yes, my second question. You used the term huge to describe the creature. Uh, do you use that term lightly? Uh, is the creature mechanically huge or is it just big to you? Um, well, <laughs> this is the problem. Um, you haven't seen it. No, not uh, no one has. You see, whatever emerged to destroy these buildings uh, had to have been uh, the size of a, a giant. Um, judging by the, the the damage that it inflicted, as you'll see in the slipper market. Um, but those who actually saw the events unfold um, have had difficulty describing it. It was as if the buildings were pulled apart from within. And they didn't see any creature. Some few who, who who saw more say that the creature itself was 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 strangely hard to see. Like every time they thought they got a beat on it as it was happening, it it, it snuck to the shadows or, or perhaps was even invisible. But it had to have been uh, huge to cause the devastation that it caused, as you'll see uh, in the slipper market. Mayor Hegri, this sounds unusual, spooky even. I was wondering if your town has ever had to deal with members of the occult. Is there any history of worship of unsavory gods or anything like that in Carrion Hill? Well, uh, a history lesson on uh, Carrion Hill. It, it, it sits atop uh, the foundation of, of, of dozens of cities. Uh, the hill is uh, riddled with tunnels and, and chambers that, that no one has ever fully mapped. Uh, so even if this beast is invisible, uh, something its size would be noticed in the ongoing rain uh, when it moved through the streets. The fact that the buildings it uh, has destroyed seem to have been insulted from below leads me to suspect that it came from some hidden place under mm -hmm. Carrion Hill. Was it, uh, you know, uh, cult-related? Uh, uh, perhaps it came from the Darklands? I, I do not know. Uh, there is always talk of strange things that happen not only in Carrion Hill uh, but all over Ustalav. It would not surprise me if it was uh, related to that, but we do not have that evidence. Right. Well, if it is at the start information you seek, perhaps this will be easy enough for us to find. Um, we could start with this Tarek fellow. What do you say, Vern? Sounds good to me. Oh, wait, I have one more, more, more question. Just if... one more question. <laughs> Where were you this morning, Predon? <laughs> you seem very nervous. Uh, actually, I did want to roll since voted on him, but after yeah. you, Matthew. We should roll since voted. I just want to know, can we see the money? <laughs> uh, not that we, do we doubt you. Not that we doubt you, it's just... My profession. Sometimes people try to try to move things around in ways that don't, you know. No, you understand. A, some amazing. of us have been beaten up a lot and had everything taken from us, so some of us are a little wary. No, I I understand. Uh, that that that's uh, that's totally understandable. Um, yes, uh, I I have it right here. Uh, if you give me a moment, he goes in the back. He comes out and he shows you, you know, forty five hundred gold pieces. You think at least, if not more. Man, I've never seen that much money. Uh, it's it's all here, and and and, and my word is uh, as good as gold. Um, Follow up question. Yes, 
may I bite it? The, the gold, uh, of, of course. Uh, pulls out a coin. <laughs> and, 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 and Vern doesn't touch it. He's just like... Vern, uh, you don't, Vern, you don't know where that's been. I'm going to put it in your hand, and you can do it. I don't <laughs> <feed you. laughs> All right. I think it's real. Catches it. All right. I'm going to put it back here. Um, uh, anything else? Uh... Uh, Mayor, I don't want to overstep my bounds here, but I know you're probably going through a tough time. Uh, I've got this pamphlet. Uh, hey, Shaylin, a creature from the void is menacing my town. I haven't actually read this one, but I just I saw the title and I thought, uh, you know, I'll just sure. read this. Yeah, I'll incredibly it, I'll specific, it Johnny. Yes. Yeah. And if you have any questions after, you know. What I... I'm sure I won't, but I'll, I'll give it a read um, in on the toilet later. Cool. Um, okay. All right. Well. Good meeting you. I'm going to send a pair of crows uh, to uh, escort you uh, uh, to uh, the slipper market. It lies in the tangles on the stormway steps. Um, this is on the lower western uh, slope of the hill. Uh, they will be able to answer any further questions you may have. But uh, thank you. Thank you. I, I knew that heroes would emerge. Good luck. Carry a sense motive on this guy? Yes, yeah. I, I would like to roll a sense. Yeah, so. sure. And actually, if you turn your attention to roll 20, you'll see that he has been added to the NPC, John. Oh, uh, nice. Good work, Troy. Oh, Mayor nice. Banton Hegri, you can see his photo there, too. Up in oh. that GM game. Come Up on, in that dude. GM girl! <laughs> oh, man. Uh, right. 26. 26. Well, there you go. I rolled a 22, but if he's possessed, it's 25. <laughs> Jesus. Or being any way, in any way magically controlled or under the effects of an enchantment of a curse. It's a plus three? <laughs> an extra plus uh, three? Oh, no, 24. Sorry. There you All go. right. So what'd you get, uh, Zakari? Uh, 13. 13. All right. So uh, Johnny Halfling and Vern feel extremely confident uh, that he is telling the truth. Uh, his demeanor is just... Uh, He's incredibly nervous and anxious uh, and wants this to be solved immediately because he's never seen anything like this. Seems on the level, guys. I quite agree. Let us make our way to this Tarek's house. Um, arm yourselves. Johnny, what is it you use in a fight exactly? Uh, got old Mr. Slingy, and he pulls out this, this half <laughs> ah! fling from his bag. Hey, and uh, yeah, Zakari pulls his out too. He's like, I'm oh. it myself. Oh, we can trade bullets. Yes. Oh, that is amazing. Yes. Oh, great. Um, and we'll keep moving. Oh, and before we set out, uh, Johnny is going to uh, come up to Rufo. It's like, hey, buddy. Yes. It's just, I know we're probably going to run into some trouble here. So I want to try something. This is a blessing given to me by Desna. Uh, uh, shit. Shaylin. I want to pass this on to you, okay? All right, brother. Lay it okay. on me. So he casts lucky <laughs> number on Rufo. Rafo. So call me Rafo. Rufo again, and I'll wipe that smile right <laughs> off your face. <laughs> Bog pop it. <laughs> so, Grant, roll a twenty-sided die. Okay. What is this? What's happening? Five. Five. Okay. So anytime in the next 24 hours, if you roll that number on a check, what skill check, attack, whatever, you have the option to either re-roll it or add two to it. Amazing. One I got a great <laughs> number out of that. That's like one of yeah, the worst, most hated numbers. I'm yes. re-rolling every time. Perfect yeah. number for, for this. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, five is the worst number. I hate it. Yeah. That is cool. Lucky Joe's number. hatred for it is yeah. well documented. Yeah. I've been recorded many times. <laughs> uh, all right, then. Um, you uh, leave the comforts of the uh, Crown Manor and head back out into the rain with these uh, two crows as your escort. Um, you make your way across town to the slipper market. I just want to see here what I have from Map John's. Hmm. Ah, all right. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah. 
bring your attention to wait let me just leave roll 20 real quick and then load it back up for no reason and then i will bring you to a map of carrion hill uh like the town map the whole town map yeah um did you guys show uh the I've opened audience up that tab what and the map I, looks like i opened up the tab and i just saw the npcs from the uh older sessions so Oh, yeah, is he, right. oh, you know what? I didn't show him to you. I just yeah. dragged him. If you him. want to show him oh. on this one, you can. And then I'll yeah, show to players. Up. Show to everybody. There you go. Now okay, he let me comes Oh, out. yeah. Oh, okay. oh, he looks so sad. Yeah, he's he had a rough sad. day, man. Rough um, morning. All right, so this is Carrion Hill. Can you guys see it? Yep. Yep. All right. Are there any, um, whatchamacallits, any map info on there or no? No. Okay, Blank. good. I'm going to show you where this stuff is. So let's go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> A little dot comes up. It's like encounter one. <laughs> All right. Do you see where the slipper market Remembered is Remembered surprise round? What does that say? Uh, no. no, we don't see any <laughs> slipper market. No, oh, I, yeah, see no, I do. That's it. Okay. Reloading. Oh, I hate this fucking thing. Got oh, it. there it is. Looks good. Right. Where are we? Oh, it's gone now. It's, it's gone, gone now. Map to back. Now it's back. Okay, now I want to show you where Crown Manor is. Uh, it's a piece of garbage. Uh, to the map layer. There it is. Oh. Ah. Okay. All right, Not so if you look off. to the south, you see that little bridge. That's what you came over. It was like all swampy on the other side. You came over into town. You walked all the way through town. The town crier met you right around here ish in the middle of town there uh middle south then you went up to crown manor and now the crows are leading you over to slip a market uh, just a so few blocks make, it's just a few, few blocks. blocks yeah hop skip and a jump you get over there and when you arrive you find the place in a state of chaos and disorder you look around you think under normal circumstances this is probably like a pretty boisterous bustling open air market um but it is all but abandoned save for, you know, two dozen or so of these crows milling about uh, like cops on the scene. It's just like uh, crowd control and making sure everything is roped off. So your crow escorts lead you through the throng of guards. They're like, they're with us, they're with us, um, to a side street that's actually been roped off with like police tape. Um, and one guard lifts a, a soaking, uh, dripping rope barrier and uh, kind of waves you through. Let's go to another map and see your pawn johns. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me see these pawns. <laughs> oh, my God, Johnny. Johnny! <laughs> Johnny! Uh, is that the Tui Iconic of Lem? It is. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. Johnny. Uh, Zakari, Vern. I think that's your old spelling of Zakari. Yeah. When you were Zakiri. Zakiri, yeah. That was just literally a typo. I just sent you the wrong thing in an email. Done. Uh, there they are. Uh, so you get pushed over uh, or like led through a rope to the north here. Um, and you see that just past uh up ahead to the right is the guy says that's that's Tarek's home um and then that partially ruined building over there uh is where the first attack occurred so he points Tarek's home here to your left and then you see the ruined building uh to the right that's where the first attack uh occurred mm. you look up to the windows that like overlook the market um, and you see people now you see townspeople just like peering out the windows wide eyed uh, but no one speaks no one's talking or anything they're just watching the only sound you hear is like a low murmur of crows talking all around you and the constant onrush of the driving rain this new crow guard is like uh, come this way takes you over to a bunch of benches uh, that have been set up and they're like under a tent so the people up there can't see um, it's like brace yourselves brings you over another roped off area lets you in 
It's like, uh, I warn you, this is uh, pretty gruesome. This is all we've been able to uh, recover from the site so far. And uh, I don't know if they told you, but we still haven't found uh, Commander Garrus. You look past him and you see the remains of three bodies. The first one looks like it's been completely flattened, like a cartoon, just crushing the chest. Like it was in a uh, like a car crusher. Oh my dear! The second one has its back snapped completely in half, and he's like a backwards L. Oh. Mm. And the guy says, "This is, uh, from what we understand, just a pair of homeless thugs who lived in the alley outside of the building where uh, the attack first took place. This is." Uh, this one is one of ours. Points to the third body, and uh, he looks away after he points at it, and you see that the body has been just like twisted like a knotted rag, and the arms are broken in so many places that they just hang and flop like tentacles from the twisted torso. His chain shirt and even his sword are twisted like the rest of the body says whatever did this was huge and beyond strong I mean it seems like the cause of death seems pretty clear but Vern would still like to do a heel check um, on the bodies to see what he can discover I will aid I do yeah I mean yeah this is this is my jam um, tw- 20 on a heel check. Just examining to see, like, is it just natural 20, stuff that could do this? 25 way? with the aid. It's natural causes. No, but I mean, like, <laughs> but I mean, Old like, aid. is it an individual, <laughs> like, yeah. each person is individually tortured, or is it like, you know, like a, a wall collapsed and crushed a guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And what's your role, Matthew, with the uh, skid's aid? 25. 25. All right. So you guys got some good roles. First of all, never seen any anything like this. This isn't something that could have been caused by a collapsed building. You know what a body would look like in a collapsed building. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it had to have been something with, like the guy said, of incredible strength to be able to twist not only a body, but the chain shirt and the sword to break a, a back in half. Like hands couldn't do that. Uh, a, a medium-sized person couldn't, like, lay a body down and, and jump on it until the back crack maybe but like this there's a precision here like it was one snap it was mm. one crush and it was one twist mm. something horrific and as they both said now huge um can I do a detect magic on the room yeah you detect magic, and you don't feel anything. Maybe one of the guards has a magical weapon or something. You catch that aura, but there's nothing else. Uh, I'd like to continue to examine uh, the body that's um, twisted, mm-hmm. like a knotted rope. Uh, knotted rag. Z- knotted rag. Uh, Zakari's going to say a, a prayer over the body, and... Um, just, you know, um, see if there's anything that can come of it uh, for good, uh, just in the sense of uh, information. So he really wants to examine it closely. Um, any residue, is there that slime on it? Is there certain bruising or uh, a, a laceration or anything that would hint at a claw or anything like that? Like, really look closely for any evidence beyond just pure, unnatural strength uh, that could give any indication as to the you know, makeup or of the weapon or if there was a weapon at all. Mm. Uh, that is a 19. No, I'm oh, sorry. 17 perception. That would be a 19 heal. 17 perception. Okay. Um, you don't see any evidence of claws. Um, there might be like a bite mark. 
but it's so hard to tell because the body is so devastated. And like I said, like the torso is wrung out, but the arms are broken in a ton of places. Like, so you don't know if like, did it break its arms first and then wring it out? Did it wring it out? Break it? Was there a, was there another creature? You get the sense that like, it, maybe there's multiple creatures working in unison, but like, why would they need to overpower this one guy now he was one of the crows maybe he was a great fighter um but there was multiple things going on whereas the first two victims were just snap smash this so one. there's no there's no puncture wounds no puncture moves even it in a hideous looks like there might be a bite, body but you could see yeah it's hard to tell you don't see any claw marks whatsoever okay. and, and is there, slime is there uh, any slime or or any sort of Left there behind looks like there residue might have been that is dried out. Um, but if you ask about the slime, it's like there's uh, there's slime in in the building. Um, we just it's it's yeah. too much. We can't well, perhaps go take us there. So uh, I sp- I'm I'm now I'm starting to play things in my head. So the these people were all out on the street, and this whatever it was came out up from the ground and and did what it was di- did what it did and then went back underground. Is this working theory? From what you from what you gather, um, from what the mayor told you, it's like the building collapsed on itself, and then they found these two homeless guys outside that have been killed. The crows went in to investigate, and it seems like they all died. This was one of the crows that went in to investigate, and he's the one that's been twisted like a rag. Oh, um, so it could be like tossed out. Tossed like out. He, or, they, the... or they found his butt. Like maybe they haven't really gone in too far because they're overcome by the slime and so they want you to investigate um but if you're asking questions like that he's like I, you should speak with uh tarik he he has that little cobble shop uh, across the street uh from where this mayhem occurred he's actually the one that alerted us and as far as we know he has the the most details about what actually went down uh, it's, it's a game of telephone at this point we're not a hundred percent sure it, like these two men we don't know if they died in the initial attack or if they died when Garrus and his men came we just don't know but Tarig may be able to help uh, and he's been very forthcoming with everything he knows uh, I, I we have him over in a, a nearby tent if you'd like to speak with him let's do that uh, yes please yeah. Okay, and looking back at the map again, you see, again, to the left here, your right, uh, where Johnny is, is the building that's destroyed. Tarig's house uh, is this little cobble shop uh, on the opposite side of the street. So they bring you over to another tent where uh, you see a guy sitting with like a, uh, uh, like a blanket around him. He's got a cup of coffee. Uh, he's middle-aged, looks to be in pretty good shape. Uh, and surprisingly, like, calm. He looks pretty calm. And uh, like, Tarek, um, these, uh, these men are here to uh, investigate and, uh, and help us. Um, the mayor sent them. Um, would you be willing to speak with them and tell them, you know, what you've told us and what you know? And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, Hi, uh, I'm Tarek. I, uh, I, I own the... Uh, the cobble shop next door and um, you know I don't know what you know so far but uh, it's just a normal day uh, every morning uh, the slipper market was was up and, and the shopkeepers were, were uh, takes a sip of his coffee they were uh, you know putting out their wares getting ready to open um, awake early uh, you know the merchants tend to set up their stalls a couple hours before dawn you know, like to be ready in case people want to come in the early morning. They're preparing their wares and whatnot. And I just was, uh, you know, working. And I, you know, like to peek out there. It gets me excited for the day as well. I'm an early riser. I like to get up early. Uh, my friends call me the early riser because I like to I like to get up early. <laughs> Takes another sip of his coffee. Um, anyways. They call uh, me Johnny Halfling. Get out of here. Uh, I've never yeah. heard of you. Um but they call me the early riser around here. I'm sure if you ask, uh, hey, do you know the early riser? They'll be like, oh, Tari, that's who I am. Anyways, I, uh, I, I was just kind of watching everything and, and drinking my coffee. And uh, just something, something came out of Marshan's house. Just crashing out, something terrible. I, I, I heard it. 
and then I saw it, but I didn't actually see anything. I just hear I hear screams, and then I I, I, I look and I focus my attention on what's actually happening, and uh, it just it felt like the whole. This is gonna sound crazy, but it felt like the whole house was like shook by an invisible hand, like a hand the size of a house, just shook it. Like you would, like with a child's toy. You just grab the toy with your hand and shake it. That's what it was like, but I didn't see any hand. It just had that feeling like a hand. Does that even, it sounds crazy when I say it, but it just, that's what it looked like. This hand shaking it, but not only shaking it, like, like taking hold of it and then just pushing it into the ground or like crumpling it up like a piece of paper in, in its fists. And so when I saw this go down, I, I, I dropped my coffee on the floor and uh, I just, I, I ran, I ran straight uh, to, to the town guard, the nearest guard I could find. And I, I told them there's, there's some, there's some crazy shit going on in the slipper market over at old man Marshan's house. And, uh, and um, by the time we, we came back, uh, it was all quiet. And so the guards, came the, the commander uh, with his guards as well everything's quiet uh, they enter the house and I don't know man wasn't more than like a few heartbeats and they walk in and immediately more shaking screaming I'm assuming the guards screaming some of them ran out i saw them run out and then just they were just sucked right back in i didn't see anything take them but they go running out of the house two of them and they're just <laughs> pulled back in by like invisible hands again this invisible hand lifted in the air and 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 just just crushed one of the guys i just saw him just go up in the air and just get like wrung out like a sponge I don't know. Whatever it was, it just left behind uh, a few bodies. I, I, I think they have the bodies, but there was half a dozen guys that went in there. Some They must still be in there. I can't imagine they're alive. I, I heard the screaming, and then the screaming stopped. And that house has been quiet ever since. You know, the, the crows aren't going in there because their guys went in when they thought whatever happened was done. The minute they walked in, I'm telling you, a couple heartbeats later, screaming, bodies flying up in the air like magic I don't know maybe that thing's gone maybe it isn't you I said one help. please one, one at a time I <laughs> I'm an early riser go ahead Joe you said one who was wrung out like a sponge I feel I know the one you may be speaking of. We saw the body. It was tragic. You saw it happen, but you didn't see what did it? Was it invisible? I, it had to have been. I, you I, saw I, the body. You saw the man alive and then crushed, turned, and killed in front of your very eyes. I, I could not the see street. the force that did it. I have really good. I think I have really good eyesight. I, I I I saw it. The first thing that happened was that the two guards ran out and then they got pulled back in. Now, knowing what I know later, it it I was like, well, it's whatever crushed that guy must have pulled them back in. But at first, I'd never seen anything like that. I think, well, maybe I just I was missing something. Maybe there were uh, arms or creatures that yanked them back in. That's not what it looked like to me. But then my my uh, my suspicions were confirmed when I saw this body just get lifted up in the air suspended there in the air and then wrung out before my eyes there was nothing around it man can can we smell that smell that they were talking about uh there's a there's an awful smell in the air of the death mixing with the rain but you don't really smell whatever it is they were talking about and from what you understand it's like you got to go in the house it's in there and they're not going in there anymore i can't help but notice your demeanor is pretty inconsistent with someone who's just seen something horrific i i mean i i uh do you think i had something to do with it i uh, i obviously couldn't I don't, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I just... Sir, uh, I got to say, at this point, I'm looking at my notes. You're our number one suspect. 
I mean, at this <laughs> I, point. I, I'm the one that ran for the guard. I'm telling you, I, if, if anybody should be a suspect, oh, it should be Old Man Martian. Isn't that convenience? Listen, I, I never bothered with that guy. He seemed like a nice enough guy. Uh, uh, he kept to himself. But, like, if anybody should be questioned, it's him. But I, I'm sure he's dead, too. There's Zachary, no way there's any survivors in there. Zakari grabs his collar and just shoves him to the wall and is like, ah. we're tired of your lies. No. Come on, uh, man. Yeah. Have coffee. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a sense motive. I will as well. Me too. Ooh, all, all garbage. Tonight. 20. <laughs> Natural 20. Single Ooh. digits for new character. Single Only digits. single digits. Uh, yeah, what you what you all missed is uh, the rolling for HP that happened right before we went on the air. <laughs> Dude, don't even. <laughs> Grant, I wasn't there for this, but apparently Grant rolled. What was it, Grant? How many tens on a D10? I may have rolled three quarters, full full blown tens. And <laughs> one eight out of all. You rolled D10 three rolls. tens in a row. And no, an it eight. was it was ten eight ten ten. Oh. I'll never forget oh. it. It feels great. I mean, it happens every day, but I'll <laughs> never forget it. I got that fresh 10 at first level, and then an 8, yep. and then 10, 10, 10. Oh, it two was up. three in a row. It oh. was three in a row. I wish that it was recorded, because it was 8, 10, <laughs> 10, 10. And then I was like, all right, Joe, you're up next. It was like, 1, 2, 3, 4. It was just awful. It was so awful. <laughs> yeah, Joe, you had ten, ten to, three tens in a row, and then Joe was like progressive one each time. And all <laughs> terrible. We have to do this on air every time. It's <laughs> know, always it's amazing. I was like, that's a lot of rolling, but it would have been worth it. Uh, Skid, would you roll for sense motive? I got a 17. 17. Okay. All right, so that's pretty high. Uh, uh, Vern and uh, Rafa. 16 for me. 16. Okay. So Total of a 24. Johnny is. 23 for Vern. 25 if he's being possessed or in any way magically manipulated. Okay, so you don't get the sense that he's being um, dishonest. You get the sense that he's uh, like holding on, something back on drugs. Oh, it seems like you've got a case of the jittery Joes mm. there, buddy. <laughs> Maybe a little over caffeinated in the morning. Maybe you should go take a couple laps and cool off. Well, as I mentioned, I'm an early riser, so I drink a lot of coffee throughout the day. Uh -huh. um, that's why they call me Old Coffee Tarek. Oh, I thought they called you Early Riser Tarek. I have a lot of nicknames around town. Uh, uh -huh. You know, I'm pretty much the best uh, cobbler uh, here. If you guys want shoes, I have, I have plenty of shoes. I can get you shoes anytime Tarek. you want. Shoes. Tarek. Tarek. So many shoes. Please. Yeah. Tell us, what is it? I, we have nothing to gain no reason to shame you for your habit uh, but I am very familiar with the effects of drugs on the system and I know it when I see it what is it? It's your drug of choice Pesh? You riding the purple dragon? Which one is? Is it the Pesh? Do you like the Pesh? You know what my drug of choice is? Seeing that sunrise every day I'm an early riser, I don't know if I mentioned that um, and I also uh, I love caffeine, so uh, you know I think I'm I think I've been more than helpful uh, not only to you but to the to the crows here. And this is the first time I feel like I'm on trial, and this is just weird. What what I do in my personal time when I wake up early and I drink my coffee is my business, and I don't feel like I should I don't feel I just don't feel like I should be put on trial for what I do beyond that. I'm 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 not a hero, okay? But like if it wasn't for me, you know maybe those guards would still be alive. But we. We, we, we're on to something because of what I saw and what I told the crew. You know what? Next time something happens, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm just going to let this whole city fall apart. Got me all fired up right now. I might I might sleep in tomorrow. <laughs> Tarek, I'm afraid we've given you the impression that we are policing this town. This is not our objective uh, at all. In fact, uh, if you knew a little more about me, you might know that I have access to an incredible amount of narcotics. <laughs> and if you help us, I may be able to help you. Yeah, he's got it all. Red jimmies, purple spikes. Junkie donkeys. Junkie donkeys. Do I look like a crow? I don't know, man. I don't know who you are. Um, but, you know. I don't know my, you, man. My, my I don't know you. A, my life's an open <laughs> book. You can, are you a cop? You can, go, you can go look at my house if you want. My is it cool, is it uh, cool can I if I light up? roll a diplomacy check on that? On that statement? Yeah, sure. I'll aid you. Me too. I'll aid. 
Ooh, 21. Him. I aid. Do not aid. Do aid. Not 23. Aid. 23. Uh, I'd say you brought him from hostile to indifferent. He's hostile? You got him all fired up? You slammed him against the wall? <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> Too much joke. coffee. <laughs> uh, he's indifferent enough now. Uh, I, uh, all right, listen, I'm sorry. I, I, I just, I, I don't like being accused for doing stuff. Um, I don't know anything about any drugs. But whatever, if I did, I don't think that has anything to do with what's happening here. So I've been more than helpful, and now I'm going to go refill my coffee, and I just got to check on a couple things at my house. So, sir, uh, could sir. I have some coffee? I'm a yeah, little, I have some too. Could I, you mind? You mind? Sure, I'm sure they they have some. I am gonna go to my house and have my coffee because uh, I like. I like the way I brew it. I, oh, okay. I wake up. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm an early riser, so I spend a lot of time in the morning uh, making the perfect brew. I'm going to go do that. And That then... sounds delicious. Thank you for offering. I'd love some. Yeah, maybe I'll bring sure. some back. Anyways. <laughs> and Burton just follows him. Yeah, I follow too. Sir. Yeah, what, what? What's up? Sir, please calm down. Can we have some coffee? Yeah, you guys just... Uh, give me like five minutes. I'll, I'll run in, and grab some coffee, and bring it right back. Oh, why don't we come with you? Yeah, yeah why don't we just uh, why don't we you join know what? you? It's a dangerous time, don't you think? We better we better protect him, Rafo. Don't you I think, think so. we better go with him? Make sure he's safe in his house. Rafo cracks his knuckles. I think you better listen to the <laughs> goblin, my friend, or else <laughs> we might have some other problems. But I could definitely help you crush your beans. All right, man. All right. Uh, Fine. Um, uh, you gotta, all right, come on in. Um, come on in. Come on in. Uh, and he brings you over to his house. Uh, let's go to the map. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Uh, he brings you over and opens up the door, and you see that there's a pool of rainwater that's collected uh, in the front room. Like there's a leak under the door, or maybe he's been like in and out all day and left the door open uh, here and there. You see shelves of shoes lining the walls and a small counter covered with shoemaking tools uh, sitting near a narrow flight of stairs to the south. It looks like it leads up to a second floor. You didn't see a third floor. Uh, there's a, wall, uh, a door in the back that probably leads off to a, a tiny bedroom or maybe a storage room. You don't know. Um, doesn't look like much of interest here. Uh, and he's like, all right, um, psh, cough, coffee. Right, got to get you guys some coffee. Just got to run upstairs for a second. Be right back. Wait, 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 wait. Could be dangerous. Take Rafo. Nope, not at all necessary. Just got to, uh, I got to check on something and I'll be right back. Don't uh, want you to be crushed by an invisible being. No, you know, I'll make I'll make the coffee first and you guys can uh, watch it while I run upstairs. And so he just like hastily makes hastily makes some coffee. And he's like, all right, that should be ready in just a couple minutes. I am going to run upstairs real quick. We are back. And he and runs Vern follows. And uh, Zakari is going to turn to Vern and just be like, follow him. <laughs> yeah. And Vern will just follow behind him like a puppy. Uh, and so he gets up the stairs and he goes over to his uh, like nightstand table and he turns around. And he's like. Hey, uh, this is not cool. I, I just can you can you give me some space here? I need to take care of some things. Okay, I'm not under uh, I'm not under arrest. I this is this is inappropriate. Uh, please, please go downstairs. I've offered you coffee from my uh, my special <laughs> special reserve, uh, first generation grounds. Sure, sure. I'm happy to go downstairs. Uh, yep, you're absolutely right. And then Vern is going to turn around and then could I roll a stealth check to come back? Sure. I love uh, in the meantime, can uh, Zakari do perception on the downstairs? Sure. Just I looking around for anything shady. 23. 23. Um, I was alarmed to discover that goblins are very good at stealth. Uh, and then I have a plus 15 stealth. Ooh. <laughs> so nice. my, I rolled a natural 18, so I rolled a 33 stealth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That is. Uh, you get in the air duct. Phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, while you go to like go downstairs and then you sneak back up to watch what he's doing. Meanwhile, uh, Zakari, you just look around. I'm poking around, uh, yeah, in his house. Uh, 
It looks like there's nothing of interest here besides okay. shoes. Uh, if you look into that little room there, it's just a, a storage room with more like shoes and shoe supplies. You don't see anything of interest and you have enough time while he's upstairs. Meanwhile, you come back up, uh, Vern, and you see him pull a bag out of his nightstand and uh, like lift up a floorboard and shove this bag under the floorboard. Wow place it back Ooh. down and then like pull up a, a blanket or a shirt over it uh and then he starts to turn around so I, you sneak, sit by the... I sneak back downstairs yeah he's like all right uh coffee's ready uh i think we're all good here let's take it to go i got to go cups uh i got them uh let's I got them stay yesterday. for a minute and chat uh, all right. I think I've told you everything I know. Invisible uh, things, uh, crushing build. I, I mentioned about the crushing buildings and the ringing out of the guy. I mean, I, I wish I knew more. I wish I could tell you more, but I ran to get the guards. Again, not a hero, but I'm the one that, that went and got the guards. Uh, if I had stuck around, maybe I'd have more information, but that's really all the information I have right now. Um, so, yeah. Um, why don't you, could you point, point us, point towards the window, show us again where you saw the guards and where, where they were thrown out and just, just walk us through. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I was pretty, uh, pretty, uh, I thought I told you all the details, but, um, that they came out that door that, well, it's not a door anymore. It looks like the whole building on that side, on the north side has been collapsed. Uh, and, and they, they kind of ran out of there and then they just got like sucked back sucked back in and then and then uh, a, a couple minutes later another one of them came up into the air and 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 like a, like a sponge uh, and and that was it and body was while thrown. he's while he's talking can burn do a stealth to slip away and go back upstairs sure yeah i'll uh zakari i'll like keep his interest 31 yeah. 31 all right so uh, he's, he's, he's retelling the story again. You zip back upstairs. You lift up the board, and you see a bag of drugs. Um, do you have uh, any alchemical knowledge? No. Okay. Uh, you can take it and bring it to just, someone who does. Or I'll just take it. Okay, so you take the drugs. Yeah. You come back downstairs. He doesn't even notice you're gone, and he's like, I, I, again, I feel like I, I went over this. Um, so. I'll be here. I'll be around um, if, if you have any more questions. But I, I really think I, I need some time to myself right now. You guys got me all fired up, and I need to just unwind. Uh, just one more thing, Mr. Tarek. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed you have an awful lot of shoes around here. I'd be a little suspicious in some folks' eyes. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a cobbler. Oh, right. Never mind. Okay. That Okay. I'm glad that 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 checks out. Uh, Sorry. I, I can't read my own notes. No, no, that's okay. fine. I I uh if you need some shoes sometime, uh feel free to come back, but for the time shoes. being. <laughs> Buddy, you're talking to Johnny Halfling. I don't know how you people wear those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, um Great meeting you guys, uh, and uh, if you change your mind on the shoes, I, I'm sure I could make them for your weird hairy feet. But in the meantime, I am going to close up shop for the day. If the crows need me, I'm happy to help. Uh, I, I feel like I'm, I almost feel like I'm law enforcement myself at this point. Um, they really, I, I've really helped them out, and I feel like I've helped you guys uh, more uh, than, uh, than, than, than I've been asked. So uh, good day to you all, and please leave. Well, thanks for the coffee. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks. See you. Very hospitable. Here's here's some pamphlets. I, Tosses okay. three pamphlets into the room. I, right. Okay. Can we go look into the in the house with the uh, that's been crushed and? Yeah. You so you roll over to the house. Um. Very. There's a front very door carefully. Here. Yeah. <laughs> very carefully. Where do you want to go? There's like a. Uh, it looks like it's collapsed to the north, and then there's a front door let's try this door I don't like the look of that collapsed wall it's a little dangerous okay and Johnny casts dancing lights just in case there's no light in there okay um, uh, yeah Zakari will cast uh, light as well on his uh, buckler okay um, what do you guys do uh, Zakari will try to open the door. 
Go to open the door, and it's locked. I'm afraid it's locked. Perhaps the collapsed area is the way to go. I'm going to take a look. I thought we hired a locksmith named Rafo. It's not a rocksmith, but I am a rock star in the squared circle, brother. <laughs> uh, Ra- you- Rafo will walk directly to the collapsed wall and take a look at it. So you go over to the alleyway, and you see that the whole side of Old Man Martian's house, evidently, um, single-story house, has collapsed outward into this 10-foot-wide alley, adding to the clutter and refuse that was already there. You see that what remains of the roof uh, is providing some shelter from the rain inside of the building. Um but there's blood and gore everywhere. The open parts of the building, it's washing away a little bit, but otherwise there's just chunks of body parts everywhere. There is a hideous smell now, Johnny, that you're here where the opening is just wafting out of the building and it's unplacable as it is stomach churning. You have to keep turning your uh, head away from the smell. But perhaps the strangest thing, believe it or not, behind you on the wall across from the collapse is a huge spiral-shaped smear of blood. Oh, what? And it, it it's just like it's on the opposite wall of the collapsed building. And sheltered by the rain, this like ominous, like rune-looking blood smear rises high on the building, as if something enormous had used a bo- broken and bleeding body as a brush to paint it. God! Oh my God! This just this doesn't sound like level five. No, <laughs> <laughs> this is like a Godzilla movie. Is it a single? Can I? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, can I do a knowledge religion or anything on it to see the significance of the symbol? Yeah, anyone with knowledge religion can roll it, or you can hate each other, whatever you want to do. Uh, Just let wait. me know. Did you say knowledge religion? Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. All right, I'll aid. I'll roll. Uh, I aid. Uh, twenty-one. I aid okay. as well. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Twenty-five. No, I already counted your age, Jim. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Can't really make out exactly what the sign, like the the deeper significance of it is, but you've rolled high enough to identify the spiral as a symbol that is associated both with magical portals and the dark tapestry. Oh, what? The dark tapestry is the dark region between the stars where ancient gods are said to dwell. You also know that this symbol is associated with the old cults, those who worship those ancient beings. This is the Cthulhu stuff again. Oh my god, I should have brought I should have made my strange hands backup character. God damn it. <laughs> and we'll see you oh. next week. Oh, oh god, god, it's oh. a freaking Cthulhu module! <laughs> oh my god. The dark god. tapestry! No! Oh, like we can't god. fight this <laughs> stuff! <laughs> Good luck with your wrestling! Your wrestling is gonna be a lot of good Ooh, against yeah, cosmic yeah. horror! <laughs> Oh, you haven't seen the horror of Rafo in the ring when he clamps down on you, brother. (laughs)